Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos, and I am so excited today to be joined by queer country artist Jamie Wyatt. Her album Neon Cross came out earlier this year, and now her uh, music video for Rattlesnake Girl is out, and we're so excited about it, and I'm very excited to talk to Jamie today. How are you? I'm doing great, Anthony. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Okay, first off, Rattlesnake Girl, one of my favorites on the album. Uh, tell us, what exactly does Rattlesnake Girl mean for, for starters? Let's get that going. Well, for me, and I wrote this song about my journey, you know, coming out and, um, and discovering my true identity. And that was a journey, you know, it came out later in life. And... Uh, so a rattlesnake girl for me is like, you know, is, is being queer is, you know, but also like embracing, you know, just like the word queer embraces, like being different, right. Um, feeling different, but embracing it in a way that's kind of empowering rattlesnake girl felt, it felt cool to me. It felt like a way, a time when I needed, when I needed something that felt like kind of tough and cool to like protect myself as I came out in the world. To say I'm a rattlesnake girl is like, yeah, like, but don't mess with me. I'm a rattlesnake girl and I know who I am. Uh, the music video is so great. And I, I think, I don't think, I mean, I'm a huge country music fan. I don't think I've ever seen a country music video quite like it. There, um, <laughs> There's tons of archival queer footage that you found that if you've put into it. How, what was that process like to kind of find all of that material and then also weave it into your, you know, your music video and the performance? Yeah, that was a really fun process. It was really cool to see a lot of historical footage um, of LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ people advocating for, for rights back in the day. There's a lot of, um, back, and I say back in the day, there's a lot of footage from you know, the 60s and 70s and a lot of rad like motorcycle chicks and um, a rad, rad like gay cowboys yeah. in, in the bars in San Francisco. And um, it's, it's just, it was so cool to see the journey, um, to see how far we've come. And like also to, for me to pay respect to, you know, queer people who, who fought for our rights. And I know you had a lot of queer people involved in like the artwork and then the various bits of the, of the production. What, how important was that for you to kind of, you know, to keep it as queer as possible and all parts of it? Yeah, yeah, it was super important. And, uh, and luckily, you know, queer people, I'm, I'm biased, but I think we're really talented. <laughs> <laughs> and so it wasn't, it wasn't too hard to find. Um, to find some great artists to work with, including uh, uh, the editor and also the the woman who did our um, graphic poster, mm -hmm. um, and it was it was super important because it's like this is a celebration and this is, you know, this video. It was it was really important to draw correlations to really what Rattlesnake Girl means. And it, in the press and to give, hopefully, you know, a lot of people sort of understood the song and where it was coming from. I, I sort of jokingly say in the chorus, like, you know, I see my sweet friends out on the weekend and they all look happy and gay. And like, so of course, like my people like got it subtly, yeah. but you know, but I also just wanted to reiterate what, what the song was saying. And then to have the support of friends and other queer people working on the project validated that for me but also that you know I always want to employ queer people and I want to employ my people and celebrate with my people. We love that. Uh, I believe you were born in Washington right? Correct. Made your way to Los Angeles and California uh, and then you, earlier you mentioned you know kind of coming out later in life. Tell me a little bit about that experience um, what it was for you and you know how your friends and family reacted. Yeah, well, my my story is one of um, I'm a recovering addict, and I believe that you know because I used drugs in um, my formative years, I very much confused myself. And I grew up in a rural area too, so I grew up in a rural area, small town. I went to high school in a small town that was very religious and conservative, and um, and so I didn't see <laughs> I didn't see anyone like myself. I always felt different, and 
And so then I moved to Los Angeles. I got a record deal in high school. I moved to LA. And then, um, you know, because partying and being in the, the music industry at a young age and, and drugs and alcohol escalated, I was dating women. And then because I was on drugs, I thought when I got sober, I thought, oh, that's just something I do when I'm loaded. And because I had this history of, you know, shame with being an addict, I couldn't recognize really what was going on. And I just wanted to be like, quote unquote, a good girl, right? And so I really conformed and I ended up, you know, I got sober and I, I did some time in jail and I got sober and married a man. And um, we joke that he's a lesbian, but he's my best friend today. <laughs> like um, I came out in, it's been oh, between four and five years now that I've come out and I just came out to my family initially. Um, I thought to myself, I'm in country music. I'll never come out to my fans. Um, you know, I just thought that was a deal breaker. I thought that was career suicide. And, but what I discovered along the way is regardless of how it, if, you know, if I might lose some more conservative country music fans, it was so worth it for me because I could look back and see my journey and, you know, and cite, and even thinking about the song Rattlesnake Girl, that is like my journey of, I, I talk about, you know, growing up in the woods and um, mm -hmm. how I kind of, you know, was a loner and how I've like seen, you know, seen like gone it alone and like seen a rough side of life, you know, addiction and, and all that. But I think it's, you know, I think what, what you said kind of brings up a topic because I think so many queer people, you know, whether it's on their way to accepting themselves or, you know, yeah. suppressing who they are, struggle with addiction and, and, you yeah. know, use drugs and alcohol as a way of, you know, pushing down, you know, their, the true feelings that they, yeah. you know, are having. Yes, exactly. And I, I did, I used drugs and alcohol to, to really suppress who, mm -hmm. I, who I am. And, uh, and it's interesting. It's like, when I came out, I had, I had gone through a relapse and uh, until I could come to terms and feel comfortable being out and gay. And that's when I could keep my sobriety and get a firm grip on trauma. And, and really I feel better than I've ever felt. And, you know, you talk about like coming, coming out and feeling whole much later in life. So it was really important for me, despite whatever stigma, or I do catch a little flack, you know, in, in country music from, from conservative fans for right. being out and proud it's really important that I do that because I never saw anyone that really like looked like me because I love country music and I studied country music um, since I was young and I never saw anyone that was out and proud. So it's really important that I'm out so that hopefully someone, you know, my young, someone like myself as a young person could look and be like, Oh, those are those feelings that I have. And, and, you know, and hopefully see themselves in me a little bit. Representation is is so important and so impactful. And I and I think, you know, there's definitely going to be, you know, people out there that think that you cannot be, you know, queer in country music, and then they'll see you. And you know, I mean, there's others too. You know, of course, um, Shelley Fairchild, uh, Brandy Carlisle, Ty Herndon. You know, I feel, you know, and, and one of the craziest things is you know, one of the biggest songwriters in country music, Shane McAnally is out and gay. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, I really do feel like we're kind of making progress in that. Cause I also like you, I'm a huge country music fan. And, you know, I think that we're getting there hopefully and making steps and obviously you're helping that conversation. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you've been very open um, even in the album before this one about, you know, your arrest. Um, but one of the, um, Hold on one sec. I want to pause because I hear my dogs barking. Because <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I'll start that one again. You know, you, um, you've been very open even in the album prior to this one with, you know, your arrest, sobriety. Um, I think one of the interesting things is, is that because of your previous arrest and we're in this election year, 
that we're finding that people that have had these arrests from years ago, then now because of the way the laws are, are not able to necessarily vote at the, in the presidential election. Is that what you're finding is the case for you? Yes, I am uh, fighting to have my voting rights restored in the state of Tennessee. You know, I relocated to Nashville because my record label's there and uh, relocated within the last year. But, you know, let me be clear. I robbed my drug dealer in 2008. Okay, so more in 2020. I was voting in LA after I had served time, did probation. Um, I've done, you know, so much therapy, so much program and, uh, and still, I, so I moved to Tennessee and they don't want, they don't allow felons to vote. You know, I've heard in California, if you're on probation, you can't vote. Mm -hmm. That's still an issue. That, that is still wrong to me. But, you know, how several years later, I can't vote in Tennessee. That is just crazy to me. Um, you know, and that is, I think, a prime example of voter suppression. So it's, uh, you know, we've got a long ways to go in some ways. I'm happy for the progress that Tennessee's made in, in regards to LGBTQ rights and in the workplace. I, you know, there's been progress there. Um, but yes, there is, there is this issue right now. I'm trying to have my voting rights restored. Intensity. Where is, is, do you think w there's like a solution in sight or is it still very much like, you know, TBD? Because, you know, we are only 20 something days away from this election at this right. point. Yes, I may have to vote in California, you know. Um, and luckily, I, it's only been one year and I still, I still get mail in California at my mother's address. But it's like, I may have to vote in California because the, it's, you know, the process. Also, the process is very long, right? I started the process a couple of months ago and it's, you know, not moving any faster, even though there is an election approaching. It's interesting because, you know, you think about, you know, it's almost like I could almost understand it more like if you were if they were doing that for felons in the state that they were a felon, but in, right. in Tennessee, you, you don't have any, you know, it, it just, it just, like you said, it's a, it's a voter suppression mechanism because I think, you know, for you and for so many people, like we were just talking about, you know, with queer people finding themselves and, and accepting themselves and potentially struggling with drugs, alcohol, whatever it is, and then, you know, kind of on this journey to finding themselves. And then once they get on the other side, if they're still being penalized for things right. that they did, you know, along the way, that's, you know, that's, that's not fair. And so I'm glad that you're being vocal about, you know, trying to get that changed. Yes, yes. And I do speak out on, on my social media pages about it, you know, only so that other people you know, there's always this, I think in American culture, we still have this like natural inclination to not talk about things, right? And so I'm always trying to keep the conversation um, going and which is why I so appreciate Glad Media for, you know, speaking about current human issues. You know, yeah, LGBTQ, it's human, these are human issues, you know? Absolutely. So, and, you know, you mentioned you're, you know, you are in Tennessee now in Nashville. How has it been for you? I mean, you know, what a time to kind of be in, to move anywhere in this pandemic, but then now, you know, being in Tennessee, um, do you feel like you've been welcomed and that you're, you know, making, like, you know, what's the experience been? Because being gay in country music is still something that's evolving and we're hoping that it's become, I mean, you know, becoming more accepted. So how's it been for you? Yeah. You know, I'm surprised it's actually going really well. And I have received a lot of love and support in coming out and in, in Nashville. Uh, but let's see, you know, to be clear, Nashville is like this beautiful city of um, just very forward thinking um, within, you know, the rest of the state is somewhat rural right. and therefore, you know, they get certain information, I'll just say it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, that sort of dictates their voting um, <laughs> tendencies. But mostly Nashville is this beautiful city that has um, a great LGBTQ community. And I've really been embraced and I'm super grateful. 
um, to get all the support and love that that I was so scared that I wouldn't get right. If anything, the the backlash that I have received in coming out was on Facebook at you know just random comments from random people, and that was a little shocking because I was like, really, twenty twenty, like really, right, okay, I know. Um, you know. But I am coming out in a very, very conservative genre. So it's really, you know, those people like to make comments in a very anonymous way. Um, but for the most part, Nashville is a beautiful bubble, you know, like Austin, Texas is. Uh, so I, I've really been, I've really felt great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad and I'm so happy that um, everyone can finally see this music video. Rattlesnake, everyone, uh, excuse me, Rattlesnake Girl. I'll, I'll pick that up one more time. Um, but I'm so excited that everyone can see this music video for Rattlesnake Girl, which is out now. And reminder, Neon Cross is available now. It's an amazing album. Um, and Jamie, I hope soon we can have you at one of our in-person events and, we, and then I can go to one of your in-person concerts too. Absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. Um, and it's, you know, we'll get out of this thing soon. But for now, to be able to, you know, conversate online is such a blessing. And I'm just so grateful that we've been able to connect, you know, despite limitations. So Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, all right, we'll talk really soon. Thank you so much. And uh, stay safe. We'll stay do. happy. Do. And we'll, we'll get together soon. Yay. Thanks, Anthony. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks so much.